So today I'm going to show you how to set up Google MCP agents and basically build anything that you want using this process. So for example, you can see here that we've set up an MCP server using Perplexity, right? And we basically got the AI for free using Google Gemini 2.5 to set up MCP server configuration. So for example, you can see right here, we've said client wants to use the tool on the MCP Perplexity research server. Then it's done a little query here. So for example, what is SEO? And it's come back to us and answered that directly, right? So it can communicate with other tools, apps, et cetera, which makes the, you know, client and Visual Studio code in general and AI in general, much more powerful. Plus you can do this with free APIs, which we'll come on to in a second. Here's another example. So we asked it, you know, what happened in AI news today? It did a query directly inside Plexity search using the MCP server and this was really easy and simple to do, but you can now make your AI 10 times more powerful. And you can see how it comes back to us with an answer directly right there. And then also you get a much nicer formatted section after that's finished, right? So this is kind of like the raw research and then we get the MCP results back right here. Now, why would you use AI agents with MCP servers instead of using, for example, the traditional method? Well, number one, this extends the capability of AI agents, right? So for example, you can have an MCP server that actually communicates directly with your Stripe account. And then it can give you invoices, it can come up with previous payments, it can give you details, etc. And it's a lot more powerful because it's more connected to different apps and it's more in your ecosystem. So here's another example. So if we come on to this, we've got some examples of traditional AI agents versus MCPs. So for tool integration, this is more like protocol. Whereas with traditional AI agents, you have to do API implementations. It kind of makes building AI agents more like a, a no code solution, right? So for example, previously you might have to go into something like NA10 or make.com and connect everything together. Now with MCPs, you've got this method that just requires a little bit of prompting here and there, right? So let me show you exactly how this works and how to get these set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a new window right here. I'm just going to close this one. We'll open up a new folder just to kick things off. The way that I'd recommend getting started with this is make sure you download Visual Studio Code. Just Google it, you can download it. And then if you install the plugin, Klein, you can get this set up, all right? So make sure you install Klein. Root Code is another really good one as well. Would recommend Klein for setting up MCP size. It's much easier, all right? Now, if you want to use Google for setting up the MCP servers, then just go to your settings. And then from here, there's two ways to do this. I would recommend integrating both, to be honest. They're both free and they're both easy. So you can set the API provider as Google Gemini, then select the model as this. If you want to get an API key, then you can go to aistudio.google.com and then from there, set up the API key. So that's one method. The other method is that you can go to Open Router. So if we find Open Router at the top here and then select Google Gemini 2.5 Pro. Google Gemini 2.5 Pro only came out about a week ago, so it's relatively new. It's extremely powerful, really good for coding in general, but for this specific method, it's even better. All right. So let me show you an example of how this works. So we're going to go to the MCP service marketplace right here, and we can just install whatever we want, right? And you can install different MCP servers. So you could link this to Spotify, Discord, Shopify, Calendar, etc. All right. Now, when you're doing this as well, if we go over to the settings over here, you've got some different options. You've got plan and act mode as well. But yeah, that's essentially how you can do it. Now you can also see what you've installed, right? So you can see, for example, the marketplace where you can install new things. And then you can see the MCP servers you've installed so far, right? Now, if you want to delete a server, let's delete these just as an example. And also bear in mind, if you change the API key or anything like that, sometimes that's going to mess things up, all right? So I'm just going to delete these just to make it easy for you. But you can see how we've got browser tools set up as well, which is pretty powerful. I'm going to delete that server just to make things clean and easy to start from, from scratch today. All right. You've also got some advanced MCP server settings, like you can see right here. So you can change, okay, what's the MCP mode? Is the MCP marketplace enabled, etc. But from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the marketplace and decide, okay, what do we want to set up today? All right. So let's say, for example, we want to set up and download and extract YouTube video from subtitles or something like that. Well, we would just click on install on the right hand side and select which one we want, right? There's so many different MCP servers that you can set up, like File System, Obsidian, Brave Search is another good one. 
If you want to install Brave Search, just click install. And what that will do is allow whatever API key you've got to connect to the internet directly inside client. All right, so we're going to run this right here. If you ever get any errors or anything like that, again, this is why you want to set up both Open Router and Google Gemini. All right, and I'm just going to grab an API key in the background. So let me do that on another tab just to keep things extra secret. Then we'll go back into Visual Studio Code, plug in that API key, retry that, and that should be good to go, hopefully. Yeah, there you go. See, that's why you want to set up both Open Router and Google Gemini. That way you can switch between the API keys. And, you know, if one breaks and one doesn't work, boom, switch to the next one, all right? So now it's asking for the Brave Search API key, which we can get from Brave Search. They actually give you 2,000 free API calls. So this is pretty much completely free. We're going to log in. Let's log in right now. Then we just have to get the code. Just going to do that in the background. One second. So I'm just grabbing the API key and the verification code. All right. Then what you're going to do is go to API keys and you can just grab an API key. All right. So once you've logged into Brave Search, I haven't paid for this. It is free for the first 2000 searches. And then we can copy that API key or we can create a new one and we can plug that into Klein. All right. So I've given my Brave Search API key to Klein. And now I can start using this to basically build like a kind of search engine directly inside Klein, right? Now, this is super useful because not only can you get the latest details, not only can you now do searches and connect your AI agent to the web as well. And bear in mind, this doesn't always work perfectly first time around, but it seems to have done it beautifully this time. So I'm pretty happy with that. But also, this is really good because now, for example, when you're building stuff, you can do, you can check like the latest updates. Or for example, if you need to pull in some data on like how to code with a certain API key or stuff like that, right? This can now use Brave Search inside the AI agent to start using this, right? And you saw how easy that was. Literally, all we did was connect our Google Gemini key, run the API request, didn't cost us a penny. Then we plugged in our Brave Search API key and we've already done a search, right? So if we pull up this data right here, you can see how we've used the Brave Search API key to run the files, run some queries, etc. And we're good to go on that, all right? And so, for example, if I say, okay, what happened today in AI news? We've basically got an AI that's connected to the internet, right? And it can use that to code and that sort of thing. Whereas normally if you're using Google Gemini or those sort of things, they're only updated to a certain point, right? And then we've got all the latest news right here is pulled in all the results, etc. And it's even given us some like little previews as well. So now, for example, we could use that data to, to build something or to come up with new ideas, right? So let's say, for example, we could ask, okay, what's, let's say you're coding a new project and you're like, okay, I don't know what API key to use or which API key, or I'm a bit confused, etc. We could say, okay, what are the best MCP AI agents to use within client? Do a brave search for me and then put this into a neatly designed table or diagram. And we can actually kind of use this as like a, a coding agent, if that makes sense. All right, so you see how it's done the MCP server request right here. And then we've got this nice little diagram that explains, okay, these are the best MCP servers to use. All right, and it's put up a bunch of ideas and done the research inside here. Now, this is way better than you see your typical sort of thing. So it said MCP AI agents for client, root code, last mile, crew, MCP server, what it does, etc. All right. Now we could also, for example, let's say you're inside Klein and you're not sure, okay, what should you implement? Should you be using API keys? Should you be linking this to tools? You know, based on your use case, what's the best option, right? So for example, if I said to the AI, okay, if we want to build out a search engine, is it better to use, or, or what's the best MCP server to use? Do a quick search for me and find out, plus put it into a quick first grade level answer. Then we'll approve the MCP search. It's doing its magic, it's coming back to us. And it's like, right, if you want to build your own search engine, the best MCP server to use 
is the Google Custom Search Engine MCP server. Imagine you have a big box of toys and you want to find a specific toy quickly. The Google Custom Search Engine MCP server is like a special helper that knows where all the toys are in the box. All right, you tell the helper what toy you want and it quickly finds it for you. All right? So you now know, okay, right, based on all the tools and all the options I have, and I know a lot of people fall behind quickly, this is probably the easiest way to get this set up. So, you know, if you're wondering, okay, there's like 10 different ways to do the same thing. Which one is the best, cheapest, efficient way? Use the MCP server inside client to help you, right? This is what it's for. It's like a coding agent that also advises you on like the best approaches and how to do stuff. All right. And the other cool thing about this is it hasn't cost you a single penny because you're using a sort of combination of Google Gemini, which is free. And that's one of the most powerful AIs in the world. And then you've also got Open Router using Google Gemini right there as well. All right. So between them, you're good to go. And the other cool thing about Klein as well is that you've got this option right here, which is basically like a custom instruction section. So you can inform the AI agent exactly how you want to do things, right? So for example, you're a coder for Goldie Agency. Here's some information about us. Always have a CTA to do this. Here's my brand colors. Here's what to do every time you code. Here's how to write content, etc. cetera, all right? So using this process is really easy and simple. All right, now let's test something else out now. I want to see if we can do this. I've never tested it before, but I want to try it, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say inside Klein here, using the Brave Search MCP server, build a tool that's like a custom search engine. Make it simple so I can quickly test it in HTML. I want to see if I can link the creations that I build locally to the MCP server that's running. All right, but not just within client, like actually within the index.html. All right, so let's test this out now. We're going to wait for this. So it's doing its magic. Now you can see here how it runs out of the quota, right? So it says the quota has been exhausted. So you can switch between API keys if you want, if the quota has been exhausted. Or the other way is that you switch between open router and this as well. You could also switch between, say, Gemini and Claude, and then just pay for the API key when you're doing like the, the technical stuff for coding. So let's run this command. And then you can see we've got the custom search engine and that should be using the MCP server brace search. But I'm just going to go back now to Visual Studio Code and I'm going to say, okay, make sure that when I search with this tool, it's using brave search slash API slash MCP server you set up. E.g. with this tool, I can easily search the web using brave search. Again, it's been exhausted. All right, so we're going to switch back now. If you want to do things for free, this is the price you pay. All right, I'm trying to show you three ways to do this. I could just use Claude and it'd be much easier and cheaper, much easier and faster. But I want to show you how to do this for free. So we're going to select Open Router now. We'll switch back to that. We'll see if that works. If it doesn't work, we can switch to another free API. Doesn't matter either way. Here we go. So that's working now. The other thing that I think is going to happen in the future is like, this is going to be easier and easier, right? So like, if you look at the way, we're going to just run this, check this works. I think this will get easier and easier to use MCP servers, right? So right now it is a little bit more technical than I would like it to be. And it's definitely not like, you know, something that could scale to the general population, but I think in the future, they'll make it easier and easier to set these up. So we're just going to wait for these. And then if you have any errors, like you can see right here, so. I did say I was going to test this and see if we could do it. Doesn't seem like we can do it. All right, but it's giving us the two options. So it said you can run your own local server for search, or you could just get the client tool to do it for you. All right. So it doesn't seem to be able to connect to tools that you built locally from what I can see. I'm pretty sure if you use something like Cursor, it'd be a lot smarter, but let's see what it does here. It is working its magic. If you want to see what the custom search engine looks like, this is what we're building out right here. Just wanted to keep it really simple. And you see it says search results powered by Brave Search via MCP. Let's X off that. Go back to Visual Studio Code. And let's see what it can do. This might be a total fail, but at least you know the limitations, right? So if you can't build tools with the MCP server and you can only use the MCP inside Klein, 
then that's actually quite useful to know. So let's keep going now. We'll hit retry. See what we get back. Starting the server. Let's see if we've got this running now. So it says, I have created a local web server that serves as a custom search engine. And we'll go from there. But yeah, you can see how to use them, how to set them up, etc. It is fairly simple and easy. You don't seem to be able to build tools and then implement the MCP server from what I can see, unless it's just Gemini not being very good. But in general, it's really easy to set these up. You can make these far more powerful. Client is a lot more powerful than it's ever been using these processes. And you can see how you can link, for example, you know, you got Brave Search or Perplexity and that sort of thing, right? Now, if you've never used Visual Studio Code as well, it's pretty easy and simple to like start building stuff, right? So for example, if we go back here, I'm going to use Claude 3.7 Sonic because it, it tends to be a lot more powerful. So let me show you exactly what I mean. We're going to use Claude 3.7 Sonic inside the API key there. And then if we say, okay, build an SEO tool for me, it's going to start using that to build stuff out, right? You can actually just code whatever you want as well directly inside here. But the difference is now you've got the power of those AI agents as well building in, right? So for example, for MCP servers, you could connect this directly here and then use that to build out your tool. Or for example, let's say you want some ideas on what to include on your website. Well, you could do an MCP server search inside Klein, search Brave Search, see what's going on, see what's trending, and then from there, start building out those tools to build something similar, all right? You could also, for example, do like a, I'm pretty sure, let's try this out. I think what you could do is you could say, okay, what have my competitors published recently on their website? And then can you create an article or a, a website directly about that topic as well? Now you can see it's coding out on the right-hand side over here. Typically as well, if you switch from like one API key to another, so for example, if you switch from like Google to Anthropic, it tends to like rewrite the whole thing. So let's see what we got here. Just gonna ask it to simplify the HTML just so we can preview this. It's obviously, I don't want to be sat here for like 30 minutes trying to code <laughs> a simple tool. But if you want to see an example, so this is the example. I just asked it to simplify it to make it easier. But you can see here we've got, you know, this website ready to go, quite nicely designed, links to our funnels. We've got the keyword research, etc. the whole tool built out with AI and some FAQs like you can see, and then you can start doing your magic, all right? And if you want Klein to just open that up, like you can see here, you would just say something like simplify this tool so I could preview it ASAP and it will just go off and do its magic. All right. So that's basically how to connect with Google Gemini for building out tools step by step. So obviously we use Claude in that last bit just to speed up things and give you some examples. But if you want to use Google Gemini, you can switch between Open Router and Gemini. Obviously there's limits on both. So that's why you want to switch. And it's really easy to set up MCP servers inside Klein just go to the marketplace section over here. If any of your MCP servers stop working or that sort of thing, then you would just click on that and you can either delete them, restart them, or you can just switch them off over here. So I'm gonna delete this server for now, just because that was a demo for a YouTube video. And additionally, what I'm also gonna do is just delete my API key because I've shown that on a live stream, all right? Not the best idea in the world. So we're gonna delete that. There we go, good to go. All right. So. Now you know how to use MCP agents to improve the power of client and coding, how easy it is to do just with single prompts. You don't need to be able to code or anything like that. And if you want to get my community that shows you how to make more money and save time with AI, feel free to get that link in the comments and description. This comes with all my best AI agents, templates, workflows, tips, tutorials, SAPs, etc. There's also multiple SAPs on NA10 agents and MCP agents like you can see. And additionally, if you ever get stuck, you can post inside the community and there's 619 people in the community designed to help you. On top of that, we have weekly live Q&A, so you can jump on the live Q&A calls and ask us any questions. Appreciate you watching and I will see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.